Hello everyone, it's Amy with Mama Bear Blue and I am live here today on the Iron Orchid Designs page, so welcome. I'm glad you're here with me today. I'm excited to share this little project with you guys um, with the new paint inlays that came out. Aren't they awesome? Did you guys have a chance to check them out? We are going to be using the Moroccan today and then I am going to show you a small one that I'm working on with the, um, the rose inlay. So the rose chintz. So again, welcome and we... Um, if you guys, you guys might know about this already, but IOD sells these really awesome wood gallery blanks. So it comes with a flat side or it comes with this um, side that has like a, an insert, you know, it's a little bit of an edge there. Lots of fun projects you can do with these things. Um, but today I, I got to looking at it and maybe someone has done this project before, I don't know, but it was the first time that I'd seen it. It started to look like a tray to me and I thought, hmm, what if we could put a paint inlay in here? and some handles on here and see what we can come up with. So let me show you the one I've completed. Uh, again, for those of you who don't know me, I am Amy with Mama Bear Blue, and that's what I am across all social media, including YouTube. So thanks for joining me again. Here is what I made yesterday. I'm pretty excited about it. This is the 12 by 16 um, wood gallery blank from IOD. I, I did a coat of paint, which we'll talk about underneath. This was just a coat of clay, clay base chalk paint in like a white color. I know it looks gold, but that's because I put a gold patina on it. We did the Moroccan paint and lay in here. I'll show you how I did that. Had these wrought iron knobs I found at a flea market, painted them with the gold patina, and there you go. So yeah, that's about the 12 by 16 size. I think that makes a neat little tray. I can totally um, see this. There you guys can see me now instead of my head being cut off. Um, with some, you know, just some pretty, um, candles lit candles on a tabletop or you know the salt and pepper it's just such a fun fun pattern this morocco pattern morocco pattern so this is what we're going we're going for guys we're going to go through the steps today and i have stepped it out in a few different variations and colors to show you guys how to use these don't i know a lot of people are kind of afraid of the paint inlays um don't be afraid of them and start using them on a small project first before you try to tackle a, a big one so these paint inlays let me tell you about them just for a second um, the ones I'm using today, these are just the covers on them, but they come in eight pages. So, and if you wanted to make a large, like on a piece of furniture, they, they fit together perfectly. They're made to fit together. Um, today I'm just using single sheets because we're just using the insides of the trays. So, thank you, Suzanne. Um, and then this was the Rose Chintz, which is another one of my favorite. I just love this pretty um, feminine, like, like old fashioned wallpaper, kind of shabby chic look. That's the other one we're going to be working on today. So again, don't be afraid of them. Just try them on a small project first. I will admit it was a little bit of a learning curve for me. My first attempt didn't turn out, but I watched a lot of videos and, um, that helped. So, so don't be afraid of the paint inlays. Give them a shot because they are amazing. They are actually, um, a, an artist, um, quality pigment that actually goes into the paint so it's not just like a sticker it's not a transfer or anything like that it is just um, it actually adheres into the paint and becomes one with it and it's just gorgeous okay so I just wanted to show you what they look like before we get started this is the little one and the 8 by 10 I have a, a one started in this to show you guys too so all right um, we are going to start with um, this another tray that's 12 by 16 it's actually the wood gallery blank and I'm gonna take a color and what's really fun about these is that the background color of paint that you use will make a huge difference on how this turns out looking and there's I don't know if you guys have had a chance to check out the page just the creative um, tribe IOD creative tribe page and there's probably some on the iron orchid designs page as well just samples of what some of the stockists have been doing with these is just amazing so I did that first tray in white. I've got another one stepped out in black and one in pink. And I really just want to use a really pretty coral color just to see what this inlay is going to look like over coral. I saw an example um, online of, of someone using the coral underneath. So I'm excited. All right, I'm going to get this prepped here real quick. And then I'm going to move you guys down so you can actually see my workspace a little better. All right, I'm going to dive right in with this really pretty coral paint um it is again a clay based paint it's normally what i use for all my projects your first step 
Um, you don't have to prime this wood or anything. If you're using clay-based paint, it should be just fine. You just want to get a coat on here that is just a light coat. It's just your base coat. And I'm not going to paint the back today, with, but I will. I do finish the backs because I just think it looks a little better. I know you probably will never see it, but like with this one, the white one, I actually put a gold patina on the back just to finish it off. So your first coat will go on. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get, get it covered because the second coat is the coat that the paint inlay will sit in. You'll have the sheet and it comes on the back with these little grid lines on the back of it. So it makes it easy to kind of cut straight. And you'll just want to make sure you have the image the way you want it and trim it to fit the insert there. I didn't waste time doing that on camera because honestly, I didn't want to bore you guys with cutting all that in front of you and then just thought it'd be easier to have it ready to go. Um, if you are wondering where to buy the Iron Orchid Designs products I'm using today, you can go to the Iron Orchid Designs stockist page. Isn't that color pretty? I love it. Um, go to ironorchiddesigns.com and click on find a retailer and then put in your zip code or city and it will show you your nearest retailer. Okay, I hit it with the heat gun just real quick. So I can get ready, sorry about the noise, but so I can get ready to put that second coat of paint on and that's the one that the inlay is gonna sit down into. Sometimes it's hard to get in the corners with it, but in, in that case you can use more of like a pointed brush like this. Just don't get your, if you have a pretty strong heat gun like mine, just don't get it too close because it will start bubbling your paint. a little thin right there but I think it's gonna be okay all right so next next one's going on so here's some tips I've learned from using the paint inlays and watching all the other awesome stockists and people who use these use them when you are make, painting this layer like I'm doing now that the paint inlay is gonna sit on you don't want to have a ton ton of paint on there because the inlay is not going to adhere well if there's a ton of paint same goes though if you don't have enough paint, just kind of a medium amount, but you do want it completely over the whole surface where that inlay is going to sit and this inlay is going to take up this whole inserted part. That I'm pretty happy with that amount. I've cut this piece to fit. Like I said, when you go to cut yours, it's going to have the grid lines on the back to help you, to help guide you cut, to cut it. So make sure when you're putting this down, you're going to put it with the paint side, of course, touching the paint. Now chalk paint doesn't have a long open time, so I don't want to wait around too long. And I, I want to lay it pretty much down how it needs to be so that I don't put it on there and be shifting it all around. And I'm just a tad, here we go. I think I got it. I was just a tad too far that way, but I'm good with that. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze the rest of this down. Now this side that got a little up onto the edge, I'm not worried about. I can always go back over that edge with more coral paint. So my next step is to get some of these wrinkles out and I'm gonna first mist it. So paint, then the inlay, then you're gonna mist it with water. Oh, this is gonna be pretty. About that much. That's my continuous mist bottle and I always have to turn it away because it does a little more than I need to. Um, then I'm gonna use my Iron Orchid Designs brayer, which I just had out here. Okay, I don't have the brayer at the moment. This is my second best choice for that is to just gently take the edge. This is actually what I use to do the transfers. Um, preferably use your brayer to roll these wrinkles out. And just be real gentle to um, rub back and forth so that that inlay is touching the whole surface of what you just painted. Aren't those colors gonna look so pretty on there? And it looks like right there I didn't quite get enough water um, on there. I'm gonna yeah normally guys use your brayer on this but I'm not gonna take time to step away and go hunt that down I think I was washing it over in my workshop sink just be real careful not to tear it because it is kind of like a tissue paper you can also take a soft cloth if you get if you get to a little bit too much um, water on the project surface you can just kind of don't rub, but you want to just kind of dab. 
because that paint is already starting, that inlay process is already starting to soak in to that paint layer. Look at that nice boho look on that. So pretty. Guys, I'm gonna set this aside because that's all I need to do on this for now. I'm gonna let this dry. Um, and usually I've been, where, where I am, it probably varies by where you are and what the temperature is in the room you're in, but down in my workshop, this has been taking about an hour or so to dry. So I've stepped out the other projects. We aren't gonna have to wait that long, but this one gets set aside. And this one you'll probably get to see in my finished pictures that we will post on the page. All right, let me show you the ones I've got ready to go. This one is the one I wanna work on. And I just got a little bit of paint on that. I'm gonna have to touch that up. So this I just painted in a very soft combination of like white and pink. So it made just a super, super soft pink. Um, I put these pretty little knobs. I love to keep all the knobs I find on all my projects and you know, whether I'm working on furniture or whatever, and I just have a whole container of them to use for stuff like this. Now, of course I didn't, you know, they are drawer pulls, so I didn't like put a screw up through the bottom because that would not make the tray sit flat. So I actually used some E6000 um, and some hot glue to get these to adhere. And I just did it like 30 minutes ago, guys. So. If these fall off, I'll work on it later. <laughs> Anything could happen when we're live, right? Okay, this has been drying for several hours. Um, and so what I'm gonna do first is just lightly mist again on, and re-wet this paper. And let's hope for the best. Every time I do use the inlay, I'm like, here we go. <laughs> All right, I've misted it. I'm gonna wait just a second. Really, they say you should wait 30 seconds before I start on an edge and start peeling this up. So start on an edge where you can kind of see if it has done what you want it to do. And then they say what you can do is if it hasn't done it exactly like you want it to, you can re-wet the paper again and wait a little longer. But I'm hoping for the best. So it's normally not this hard, but because this is down in a corner, I had to find a tool that would help me start an edge and it's not, that's not quite wet enough. Sorry, bear with me guys. If it wasn't hidden in a corner, I could get it. Okay, here we go. Okay. You guys see that? Move it up a little bit. This is always my favorite part of these things. So that inlay, that paint, that, that uh, pigment, has adhered right into my paint. So pretty. Okay, let's see. I have a little bit of too much water down there in the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that out. So there you go, not pretty. Now, do not throw these away guys because you're supposed to be able to get a second use out of these. Um, so I just set it aside to dry. Now your second use is gonna look probably a lot more um, muted and faded, but I think that will be pretty. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do anything with that. Now this one, I think what I wanna do is hit it with the heat gun a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna need to do to seal this. It's gonna be loud for a second, but I gotta, get, I gotta do this step. Don't get it super close, but you know, about six to eight inches away is good. This is eight by 10, I think I told you guys that. Now see that was already starting to crackle a little because I got a little close. Okay, so what I do next is I take a 50-50 mix of water with clear sealer. So this is just a regular water-based clear sealer, whatever you would normally use on your projects to seal like your furniture or your small things. So I'm just gonna mist a light coat of this. I put it in one of my um, misting bottles. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to, I want to set this up without, I, I wouldn't want to seal it with a brush at this point because I don't want to smear these pretty colors all around. So three coats is what you're going to need to do, letting them dry in between coats. I really I don't know if I want to force that too much. So I think what I'm going to do is let that kind of dry on its own. And then I'm going to, I'm going to move you on guys onto another another one that I've done that I I have never tried this before and I <laughs> so I'm gonna try it in front of you guys and just see how it works but I am gonna set this to dry for just a few sec for a few minutes and then get a second coat on there normally I try to heat gun it but I don't want to 
I don't want to rush that ceiling part. Okay. This one I did not too long ago. Let me just do this real quick. I'm going to end up re-wetting it, but all right. Let me move that aside. Still drying a little. Let me just try a little bit more heat. So like I said, you're going to want to spritz it three times with your sealer water mix. All right, that's pretty good. I'm going to get a second coat on there. So and the reason I want to do this, I think I told you guys, if you try to seal this right away, it's going to smear. But also, I, I use this three times, let it dry, and then I'm going to go back and wax it a little bit just to give it a more of a kind of a waxy looking sheen instead of um, the sealer looking sheen that I'm using. So, all right, I need to let that set aside. I'm going to show you guys how I finish off the project by doing it on, on here. This has two coats of paint on the outer side of this. So while the inside's drying, I'm going to show you how to finish off the whole project, including this inside. Once um, that's dry, I'll do that. But right now, since this is good to go, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to use a little bit of clear wax, and I have that over here. Um, the gold patina is fun to use with this transfer because it has um, oh, also guys, don't ever throw your transfer or your paint inlay. Did I say transfer earlier? Sorry. Don't ever throw your little inlay scraps away. These are my trim pieces from all the ones I trimmed to fit the inside of the tray. But you can use these on small projects, so be sure to hold on to those. Okay, I'm just going to use some clear wax out here on the outside. And then I always clear wax first before I put any kind of colored wax on. Sorry guys, I'm getting distracted here. Before I put any kind of colored wax or dark wax or black wax on, I always clear wax first. You'll probably hear that from most stockists. And that just lets you be able to control your wax a little better. Okay, so then I, what I wanna do is take um, just a little bit of the gold patina. I probably should have done that right before the wax, but I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Sometimes I break those rules and it turns out really cool. Well, let's go with gold wax. Change my mind and I'm gonna take just a dab. Because I think it, this makes everything look real, I don't know, sparkly and pretty. I'm just gonna go a little bit on my edges and then wipe it back and see what we've got. Since I've clear waxed it first, if I've overdone it, it's not gonna hurt anything and I can even go in with a little bit more clear wax if I need to and fix it. I'm gonna take a little paper towel here. I just want to, just a touch, just like a touch of gold on this. And that's pretty shimmery. I thought this would be cute, I don't know if I already said this. <laughs> Sitting in a bathroom with like a little jewelry tray to put like your necklaces or rings in. And if I'm missing question, guys, I promise I'll go back and answer later. Maybe just a little more on these edges. So when I get my center, the center done in there with one more coat, I will go back in and maybe clear wax it and see if I want to add any more wax. But I don't know that I'll be able to do that until that sealer is completely dried out, dried up. Right, just a little more. So this will be my third time with the sealer water mix. I also, after I have done the three coats of the sealer water mix, I like to wait um, until usually the next day to mess with this as far as brushing the um, wax on. And when I do, I still have a really light hand. I really want to keep the image the way that it is. So let me finish up with the gold wax here. I think I'm happy with that. So that sealer is beating up, which means that's sealing pretty well because those first two layers have pretty pretty much done the job. This third layer started to beat up a little bit. And the paint's not coming back off. That's kind of a sign. So if my paint was, if that inlay was coming back off on this, I would know that I probably need to seal it again, but it's looking good. It's looking pretty. I really wish I could find the first tray that I showed you guys. I don't know what. I don't know who came in and stole it. 
<laughs> not done. This will dry overnight. Tomorrow I'll clear wax this carefully and maybe add a little bit of gold to it. And I think that'll look nice. And this one, this is different, isn't it guys? <laughs> it's just a little different. But I think if I had to use the, um, the white color again and used it, it would, it would show up better. But it's definitely unique. And like I said, it's looking kind of art deco-y to me and a little bit kind of like snakeskin. But the, um, the next step on this one or whatever one you're getting ready to do would be, and I think I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, would be to um, glue on your knobs. And I, I just find it, it, you don't wanna, you're gonna have to glue them unless you have the screw down type that was on my first tray. So those actually look really pretty on that black. Um, E6000, I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm not sold that I want these to be the knobs for this project. <laughs> E6000 and hot glue were, were what I needed to um, adhere the knobs to that first tray. And then the first tray I showed you, which I'll post in pictures again, were just the handles um, from like a dresser or something that, that screw down into the project. So um, it is not hard to use these paint inlays. It's just, you know, just it's, it takes a little time to get used to learning like how it works and try it on small projects first and then see how you like it. And um, you kind of learn a little bit as you go and watch a lot of the other stockists too. They have some great videos on how to use these, but um, I am going to finish up these fun little projects and I will post some pictures and get them on the IOD page. So yeah, it didn't take too long, did it guys? These were, you know, I wish I had time to show you this one but it'll be on the pictures. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> when this one peels off, maybe I'll take some video of that and finish that one up for you guys to see. You can tell how it just changes the look of these trays when you use the Moroccan inlay with the different colored backgrounds. Again, it looks like this. And then again, all the, the products you can find from your local stockist, just go to ironorchiddesigns.com and put in your zip code and it will come up. And again, I am Amy. I'm glad you guys joined me today. I am Mama Bear Blue across all social media, and I will see you next month. Thanks for watching. Bye.